That on the night of Laylatul Qadr, the Malaika are more than all the stones in the world. Why? The angels love those who turn to Allah. The sinners who stop and turn to Allah. So they come. They come to give us encouragement. They come to give us hope. They come to help us. This is their system. This is their way from the beginning. It always has been. And they've taken this upon themselves. That they are the ones who come and they seek forgiveness for us. For the people who believe. And protect them and save them from the torment of the fire. Oh Allah, oh our Lord, the angel said. Enter them into the gardens of paradise that you have promised them. What did we do to deserve that? The angels go back to Allah. In the normal circles of knowledge. In the normal study circles. In the normal Quran circles. They go back to Allah. And they say so and so was making tasbih and tahmeed. And saying la ilaha illallah. And studying and so on. And Allah says. What were they asking for? They were begging for, for your paradise. Have they seen my paradise? Allah says. No they haven't. So what if they had seen my paradise? They would be more keen for it, Ya Allah. And what else are they asking for? He knows this, but it's a, it's a teaching for us. So that we understand who Allah is, and we understand who the Malaika are. Have they seen the fire that they're asking protection for? No. And if they'd seen the fire, they'd be more stronger in that. What else, O oh angels? Oh, there's a person who's walking by, but he sat down on the edge. He had no intention of anything, but he just popped in. Allah says he's forgiven as well. Then what in this night, where millions upon millions of angels are coming down? Salamun. Salamun. Hiya hatta matla'il fajr. Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. And this ayah is extraordinary. Because in just this one single ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes His majesty, the majesty of the Qur'an, and the majesty of the night of Qadr itself, just in this single ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to Himself immediately, inna, in the plural. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one, but He refers to Himself in the royal majestic we. Nazalna, we have sent, anzalnahu this book. We have sent it down from high above. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala established to Himself His exaltedness and His highness from above the seven heavens, above His throne, Jalla wa ala, in a manner which befits his majesty and he sent it and he doesn't even have to say the Quran and this is as the ulama said a majesty of the Quran that it can only be something so amazing and just referred to in a damir as it we have just sent it down because it is with us all the time it is the single most important thing that we have that's what we have sent down think about it doesn't want to give us yani, the clear name and this is a way, as the ulama said, in balagha, in rhetoric, in, in eloquence, in the Arabic eloquence, to establish and to emphasize the importance of something. And in a layla, Laylatul Qadr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this night a very interesting name. He called it Laylatul Qadr. And he mentions this word three times in the surah. And it's appropriate that there are three key meanings to the meaning of Qadr itself. The first, as Ibn Abbas radiallahu an said, is that it is from the literal meaning of Qadr, i.e. the decree, i.e. what's going to happen. And this has all been written in the Loh al-Mahfuz, the preserved tablet. But on this night, Laylatul Qadr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals to the angels that decree the Qadr, those who control the winds and control the weather and control life and give death and take the soul. The entire year's actions and decrees are given out to them in this night. And this is why it's called Laylatul Qadr. And the second meaning for Qadr is that it comes from the meaning to restrict. And you know why? That's because there are so many angels present on this night that there is no space for them. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tanazzal. 
i.e. not that the angels just come down and we'll come to that not that the angels just come down to visit us but they have to come and leave immediately because the next group are waiting to come and visit us and give salam and go back but this will come and then the final meaning which is the the most supreme meaning is that it is of glory and power and izza and that's what qadr means when i say in arabic qadartuhu or he is yani azim al qadr then we mean that by that that he is a, a great person a great man and why not because in this we have set in this night allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said we have sent down this this book wallaha qadr it's an azim book and it came down upon the tongue of someone it came down on the on the tongue of a mighty mighty angel jibril alayhi salatu was salam and it came down to a ummah laha qadr this nation allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed and made the greatest nation to walk this earth so this is why it is called Laylatul Qadr, the glorious, the majestic, the amazing night, the night of power. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says in the next ayah, after setting the scene, get the people thinking, wake up yani, the souls to who is addressing them, that it is their Lord Azza wa Jal that is addressing them. So amazing, so transcendent, so high, but yet so personal and so close, wanting to show to us his love at all times, every time. It's a sign of strength. When he turns to us and he says, I have forgiven you. And he says to you, I have given you this. And he says to you that I love you and turn to me. And I will keep on pardoning you. It's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to forgive and, and pardon. So this initial ayah, despite his majesty, despite his greatness, has got us in, this, uh, in our mind that we are now about to be told something. Because we do not know about what Laylatul Qadr is yet. Which is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ And how will you know what the night of power is? And أَدْرَاكَ in the Arabic uh, language, is, it, is, it means to make you know. And in Imam Sufyan al-Thawri radiallahu an, he made a beautiful point. He said, and this is the fa'idah of studying the Qur'an, he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala many times in the Quran says ma adraka this, ma adraka that. So ma adraka ma laytul qadr. What will make you know what laytul qadr is? Wa ma adraka al qari'a. What will make you know what the calamity is? Wa ma adraka ma al haqqa. What will make you know what the event is? When he uses the word adraka, then it means that the next ayah he's going to tell you what it is. Because of its importance and its impact upon your life right now. Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alfi shahr. There you go. This night, this night of power is better than a thousand months. And it's good news in this statement. Because it's not a thousand months of our worship. Because if it was a thousand months of our worship, we'd still be in trouble. Because one, one month of our worship, one year of our worship is like nothing. You look at our definition of worship, and you look at the system of the Prophet ﷺ and the companions of what they understood as ibadah. Really? I mean, take a topical issue, taraweeh. Taraweeh, we the Muslims, we love to sit there and we argue, should we pray 8 rakah, should we pray 20 rakah, should we pray 36 rakah, should we pay 41 as they used to do in Medina? They differ and they argue and they split and they don't speak to each other, but they all agree on one thing, it's got to be done in one hour. But as long as you do it quick, subhanallah, this is our, ment uh, our mentality. And the prophetic mentality is the exact opposite. We don't care about the rakaat, 8 or 10 or 50 or 100, but we want to pray the whole night. They never used to pray except yani, a third of the night. The average is half the night. The majority of the kibar sahaba, Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Bakr radiallahu anh said about my father, that when he used to stand with us, he would make his family stand with him. We would start in the early part of the night and we would think that would we have enough time to eat sahri? This thousand months is not a thousand months of our worship. Even better news, it's not even a thousand months of their worship. Because the reason this ayah was revealed, according to the Imams, is that the Prophet ﷺ was told about a man from Bani Israel, who for 83 years, 1000 months, spent the entire night for those 83 years in Salah. The whole night, 83 years. And during the daytime he had all day. And the Prophet ﷺ, he was shocked. That's something we can't do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he saw this, 
he gave him this night of Laylatul Qadr, I'll give you this person's worship in one night for my ummah. This is the main reason they're of the revelation of this ayah. And Imam Malik ibn Anas narrates that the Prophet ﷺ was shown the ages of mankind. And he looked, at, he looked at them and he realized that his nation, the average age, had been decreased. So he turned and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saw the fear in his eyes. What was the fear? He said that my nation will not be given enough time to do enough good deeds to get to Jannah. Because our lifespan has been decreased. And the other nations had more time. They had more length of, of time span to get those things done. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him Laylatul Qadr. A lifetime of worship in one night. A thousand months of the highest quality of worship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say days of worship. He mentions the nights. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed the night. And we should recognize that. This is the time when no one can see me, where I don't make my rak'ah look very nice so everyone else can think, oh, he's very good. You're by yourself. We'll now see if you can step up to the mark. That's why the night has been praised so much. And this is the night that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to send down his qadr, his angels, and his Qur'an. But he did not then tell us, خَيْرٌ مِنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرٍ But he did not tell us when. And this is a rahmah for us. The exact night of Laylatul Qadr, the 21st, 23rd, 25th, 27th, we don't know. But we Masakeen, again, we put all of our eggs in one basket and say 27 and that's it. We have this great confidence. It can only be this night and that's it. And you know what? If it's not this night, well, I did 27th anyway. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, well, you know what? I'm going to go for all 10. I'm going to isolate myself from my family and from business and from, and from the people outside and, and, and. And I'm going to stay in this masjid. And I'm not going to do anything else except every single second of this day and night of 10 days. I'm going to seek Laylatul Qadr. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, as Imam Al-Razi said, a beautiful statement. He said, it's almost as if Allah is saying to the people, I did not tell you when Laylatul Qadr is because I do not want you to fall into sin. Because the one who out of, out of his desires and out of his weakness of his, of his Iman, misses the night in which he knows is Laylatul Qadr intentionally, then he has greatly sinned. تَنَزَّلَ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالرُّوحِ فِيهَا بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِ مِنْ كُلِّ أَمْرِ تَنَزَّلْ The malaika, they are here. Salamu alaykum ya malaika. Because they are here now. And you know what? They come and they give salam. And they leave immediately. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they visit his baytul ma'mur. 70,000 come and then they leave never to come back again. And then 70,000 more come. And they give the tahmid and tasbih, and then they leave. And they don't come back again. Just think of that number every single day. That on the night of Laylatul Qadr, the malaika are more than all the stones in the world. It shakes the mind. And why? The idni rabbihim, with the permission of their Lord. Which means, they want to come here. To us, because the angels love those who love Allah. The angels love those who turn to Allah. They come to give us encouragement. They come to give us hope. They come to help us. This is their system. What did we do to deserve that? That's why they said, some of the ulama said, that in the authentic hadith, one of the signs of Laylatul Qadr the next morning is that the sun is bright, but it's a white light instead of its normal you know, bright yellow, and the rays come down. But the morning of Laylatul Qadr, the sun is clear, but there's no rays. And they said because of the wings of the malaika, there's so many that they block the rays. The mind cannot understand that. And did you hear, did you, did you realize that Tanazul malaika warruh? Again, the izzah for Jibreel alayhi salam, teaching us who the key players are. And Jibreel is a key player. My brothers and sisters, Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, the greatest of the great. He comes down on this night 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him down for us, so he makes dua for us. Salam upon us. And don't take the salam of the malaika as some small thing. Oh Allah forgive fulan, oh Allah forgive fulan. This is the night that we are in at this moment. This is where we are. Here, hatta matla il fajr, and in the end of this surah, it is all night. And look at the beauty, not just a small portion, but the entire night. So much so that just by being here until now, we've taken two portions of Laylatul Qadr because the Imam of At Tabi'in, Hassan al Basri, said, The one who prays Maghrib and Isha in Jama'ah has taken two hub from Laylatul Qadr. We have already taken from Laylatul Qadr, insha'Allah. This is the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has given to us. And, you know, I think, wallahi, all we need to do is just reflect. Just reflect simply upon, in conclusion, just reflect upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, if there was a person who was an outsider from this whole kind of religion and deen and just like an observer, huh? And he was looking at this, these Muslims and he would look at Allah and he'd say, you know, Allah is the Lord of these Muslims and he loves them so much. He loves them so much and he gives and he gives and he gives. And these Muslims, I'm watching them, they take and they take and they take. What did Allah want from them? But thanks. Nothing else, just thanks for what's been given. And what did they do in return? A token gesture. The best of the majority once a week. Juma. Or twice a year, Eid. Or once a year, Laylatul Qadr. Or once in a lifetime, the Hajj when he's 60 years old. Token gestures yani, in return from us. So I want to say, step up. Muslims, get a hold of yourselves. It's time we step up. We stand up and be counted. Because, you know, Wallahi, this person, he would say, you know what, this has got to be a joke. And Wallahi, he's right, it's a joke. Muslims can't be like this. That we live in, in a system Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us everything. He's given us sakina and salam in the dunya and promised us sakina and salam in the akhirah. And we treat it like some game. Choose and pick and choose, night here, night there. We'll pray this, leave that, give this, forget that. We need to stop and just reflect and say, you know what? This is not, we're not doing anyone any favors here. Have some hizza and respect for yourself. We must recognize our, our honor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this honor. Step up.